Well, hello and welcome to the Thursday DC Today. We're getting ready to come to the end of the week. Excited for the Dividend Cafe tomorrow. We're going to talk at great length about Credit Suisse and kind of things happening on Sundays in the financial markets these days. But for today, I want to kind of pick up where I left off yesterday um, because the market went down 500 points in the last 15 minutes yesterday. And I said it was not in response to what the Fed said and didn't say because the Fed said it two hours before that. And so the market went higher after the Fed made the announcement and then it kind of stayed up there even as Jay Powell was doing his press conference. And that the best theory to me, when if you uh, believe as I do in Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is almost always the right one. And the simplest one here was that there were traders who had a, a long position on the idea of uber dovishness and that they let it ride. And then at whatever point they realized we weren't getting any more juice out of this, they cut loose, get a lot of selling pressure that brought markets down suddenly and quickly at the end of the day. And then we were up nearly 500 points. I don't think it ever got quite to 500, but I saw it you know, above 450. So it kind of made all of that 15 minute uh, dump back this morning. And, and again, you know, there could be another explanation, but I think the simplest is usually the best. And I think it sort of validates what I was saying that uh, normalizing for kind of where things were. Now, then uh, several hours later today, the market did give that 500 up. It even went negative for a little bit. And then it kind of came back at the end of the day and closed up 75 points. So on the week now, I think I'm remembering correctly, the Dow is up 375, up 375, down 500, and now up 75. And so still net up on the week, but with you know pretty significant intraday volatility. And that this is the, the world that we're in now. Um, I want to point something out on the math of what the Fed said yesterday. The Fed is right now projecting two different things. One about interest rates, one about economic growth. And I just want you to decide if you think both of these things can and will prove true. Uh, right now, the Atlanta Fed tracker has GDP growth annualized for Q1 at 3.2%. And that's a kind of real-time model that could be capturing some data that ends up being antiquated. Uh, it's not a perfect track record, but I, I think that there are various sources that are projecting 2% and some 2.5%. And right, like I said, the Atlanta Fed tracker right now indicating 3.2% as an annualized growth rate for Q1. But the Fed has us closing the year at 0.4% for 2023. Um, year-over-year year annualized growth. So if you're getting 2 or 3% in Q1 and you end up at 0.4, you had a recession, okay? You did not get there without a, a contraction and uh, a rather significant one of that. Now, maybe the Fed's wrong about that. I, I, I'm not, I don't have any opinion either way. But when you see that that's the projection of what they're talking about in terms of economic growth and then you see them saying that they are not anticipating any rate cuts this year even at the end of the year i don't believe both things so uh, i one of them could be wrong and not the other and i and you you're welcome to pick which but i don't think both make sense um the other thing i will do i put in the dctoday.com the written exact verbatim quote from jay powell one year ago but essentially he talked about, and I think he's right about this, by the way, the inversion of the yield curve primarily mattering in the first kind of 18 months of the, um, the term structure. Right now, from the one year all the way to the 10 year, everywhere in between, every point on the yield curve has a lower yield than the current Fed funds rate. And what Jay Powell said a year ago is that if that happens in the first kind of 18 months, then um, you've inverted your yield curve and you're going to have to cut rates. And you've probably created a recession and you're going to have to cut rates. And so by Powell's own messaging, um, and not from some obscure paper he wrote 18 years ago, I'm saying something he said one year ago as chairman of the Fed. Um, they are in a position where they're going to have to cut now. 
to deal with what they've done. And yet yesterday they raised rates of a quarter point. So why does the market believe that they're going to have to cut by the end of the year? Because they think it's going to have to take back what they just got done doing. Uh, we closed today at, I believe it's 56%. Excuse me, I'm sorry, 66%. Odds of no rate hike at the next meeting, 34% of another quarter point. That had been 50-ish, 50-ish before, and it's kind of moved that direction. But when you're talking about what Powell said a year ago and the, and the reality of the yield curve already being below where the current Fed funds rate is, um, and when you're talking about uh, them projecting an economic activity that would be the prime stuff that rate cuts are made for, uh, I think they're done. I think cuts are coming by the end of the year, and I think that they're done. And I think that the data says it, and I think that you, the qualitative evidence suggests the same. In the meantime, the 10-year today hit 3.42%. 3.42, I'll remind you, we were above 42 a short while ago. Uh, the only sectors that really were up today are communication services and technology. Communications being at the top, energy was the worst, but it wasn't, it wasn't down huge. But uh, there was definitely not great breadth in the market today. So they're digesting this reality about the Fed, um, digesting what the Fed means, not what they say. And uh, still First Republic's out lingering. And uh, I don't know that all the, re the tensions about the banking system are resolved yet. This is the state of markets. Expect ongoing volatility. Um, we're higher than we were, uh, even with up and down, up and down movements. That's our story. That's the story at the DC Today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading. And I'll see you in the Dividend Cafe tomorrow.